Hey, what's up, guys? Arava here, and welcome back to an episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 81 today for the USA Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous episode, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. The rule regulation change came in there at the Japanese Grand Prix. Head into this one, then. We've got a dry qualifying, apparently, and then a very wet Sunday there, so this is going to be a very interesting one indeed, because USA already is a difficult circuit anyway for myself versus the AI. With some rain, it's going to be a tough old one, and also it might be tough because everyone's plateauing here a bit, so we don't know how it's really going to go into it. Japan, McLaren, and Renault especially seem very quick. I don't know how the car is going to play around here. Technically, we've still got that advantage on paper, but lately it really hasn't been showing in the last couple of episodes. Uh, Red Bull and literally Renault, uh, literally separated by a pixel there pretty much, but I think they're the third best team on the grid. Of course, our main rivals being Max Verstappen, and then uh, still kind of in the fold is Nico Hulkenberg there with Raikkonen and Ricciardo kind of fading away in the recent few episodes, but we'll see how it goes around Kota when we go to it. So let's just get straight into that dry qualifying. Like I said, it is going to be very wet on Sunday. So there's going to be no point to try any clever tactics in Q2 and Q1 is going to be a very simple run on the ultra soft tyres to get through into Q2. Thankfully, we do do that. You can see we're actually quite on pace with Raikkonen, although Raikkonen set his lap time on super soft. So that surprised me that, uh, you know, he was uh, that much faster on the slower tyre. So I have, I have to find some time in my Q2 run there. As the sun comes down, then it gets a little bit darker and darker as we go on through the, the Saturday session, but in Q2 now, real commitment in 7th gear here. Didn't even bother to go up into 8th gear, actually, as you can just carry more speed revving out in 7th gear. Big lock-up, though, on the front left as he uh, slammed down the brakes in the back straight there, so maybe lost a tiny bit of time, but good momentum, actually, through that sector. The car didn't feel too floaty on the rear end, but a lot of understeer on that left hand on the second last corner through to the last then a little lock-up there, but that actually gets us the car turned in nicely and across the line with DRS open, and we're up into P2 then, Hulkenberg and uh, signs around us, but by the time we end the session, I'm way down in P10, but we get through by the skin of our teeth, and once again, for the second time now in a row, Raikkonen, my teammate, gets knocked out in Q2, and I'm actually left, you know, just about getting into Q3, so I don't know if that's a sign and a, you know, kind of, you know, indication that our car definitely is getting a little bit slower relative to the likes of, you know, Renault and McLaren upgrading, Red Bull have been kind of there, but I don't know if it's just these tracks that aren't suiting the Ferrari car, perhaps, you know, kind of like the opposite of what we had the Chinese Grand Prix or Silverstone, for example, with Raikkonen and that, you know, but those tracks, our car was going really well, surprisingly, and these tracks, surprisingly, the car isn't going so well because we're getting knocked out in Q2 with Raikkonen's sake, uh, but that's quite unlucky, though, for Kimi, because once again, just like Japan, he was so, so close to actually making it in there, so, you know, it's tough luck then, so in tomorrow's race, like I said, it's going to be raining, so that's going to be a really tough recovery drive, maybe, from Kimi uh, to make it back in. In Q3, then, our first run wasn't too great, we're down in P8, so we have to do a second run, but we do have fresh tyres to burn, obviously, but the unfortunate incident here is our DRS fails, literally as I'm about to start my second final lap in Q3. So DRS, obviously, very crucial for the qualifying lap to try and get any kind of extra straight line speed you can, and obviously this track has two uh, kind of activation points on the, on the pit straight and the back straight. We already have missed that pit straight activation, and we will miss the main straight one on the back there towards the hairpin, so that's going to be real annoying and frustrating. It will lose us some time. You don't really realise how much time you do maybe lose with DRS. Even though the delta time is going to be green, that's purely because I've done a better job in the corners, but in the straights, I'm not getting as much time. Usually, you would expect to gain at least maybe a tenth at most uh, on that on that straight, so that's not going to be great for us. And so we go through to the end of the lap, and it's, well, it's going to be an okay lap, I feel. We're going to improve at the moment, but I don't think overall it's going to be too great. We got up into P4, but obviously people are still yet to set their last lap of the session, and by the end of the session, we're down in P10, and I'm not really surprised with the DRS failure there. Carlos Sainz makes it another 1-2 for Renault with Hulkenberg in second place. It's a great result for Renault. Lately, they've really been on the up. Alonso does well, though, in P3, but we've been now qualified by both Red Bull cars. Both of them in a strong P4 and P5, and with rain tomorrow, I don't have a lot of high hopes to really get right up there in the mix for the top three, maybe, but our best hope will be trying to close up to those Red Bull cars to try and alleviate the damage uh, that we they might cause in the championship for sake. But uh, really frustrating. The second time now this season, our DRS has failed in qualifying. This one was even more hurtful than it did at Canada because this one was in Q3 where it really mattered for the grid position. So that's a shame. We're going to have to go into Sunday then and just make the best of it if we can. We are qualified Kimi anyway so that's the only kind of source I can take into that. So let's go to the intro then and go to the grid. In 2012, America's on-again, off-again love affair with Formula One 
finally seemed to settle down with the completion of this wonderful racing facility here in Texas. Since then, we've been treated to some incredible races, including, of course, that classic wet-dry championship decider of 2050. We have 10 turns to the left and 10 to the right here at the fantastic Circuit of the Americas, overtaking opportunities into turns 1 and 12 at this anti-clockwise 3.6-mile track. But we may well see cars struggle to slow down there today as the wet weather does interfere with the low-speed grip. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk briefly about Max Verstappen. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position. And starting alongside is Nico Hülkenberg. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Alonso, Ricardo, Stoffel van Dorn, and Gasly, Hamilton, Bottas, the engineer, and Charles Leclerc, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Roman Grosjean, and Hartley. Verstappen, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Perez, Marcus Ericsson and Esteban Ocon, Sirotkin and Lance Stroll rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So we've been dealt a tiny bit of good fortune here. Max Verstappen has a grip penalty there for, I'm assuming, changing components on his engine. So he's actually now behind us and way back in around P15 or P16 that was. So it's going to be a difficult time for him to recover as it will be for Kimi. So one of my championship rivals now is behind me already. So we might actually limit the damage quite well at this race. We can see here it's going to be a very wet and soaked USA Grand Prix. Maybe even monsoon conditions there because that's that icon of the three streaks coming out of the cloud. So it might be quite a treacherous run later on in this race. We're going to start off in full wet conditions to five red lights to the USA Grand Prix and we're underway from P9 on the grid elevated of course by Verstappen's penalty and it's a very gingerly start there on the throttle pedal and we're just going to take it nice and easy there literally blipping the brakes on the left hand side of the pedal and we're down the inside of Valtteri Bottas to get up into P8 there and so actually by all accords that's a pretty good start in the full wet conditions as Alonso tried to have a look on Hulkenberg there but meanwhile it's uh, Sainz with a big lead already in into the first S section then in sector one. It's still a one-two for Renault. Alonso behind then slots in in P3. You've got Ricardo in P4 at the moment there. So at least one Red Bull's up there. But Ricardo obviously has lost so many points as of late. So he's not really going to be a big threat to me in the championship. So I'm not too worried about him. It's honestly just going to be a case of surviving this Grand Prix really. There was a chance that it's going to dry out right towards the end of the race. So we can get to the dry period and then maybe make some moves. That'd be great. But for that, we also have to stick behind Hamilton and try and stick with him and keep him honest. And at the moment the rain is so strong here I can hardly see Hamilton's even his uh, even his rain light on the tail of that car I, I can hardly see that into turn one as we climb the hill or we can get a little bit closer to see his car finally and uh, we're both kind of keeping uh, the other cars ahead of us honest of Gasly and then Van Dorn I think that is in the second McLaren on the road but on lap three at the moment conditions are not getting any better for now they're actually going to get worse because that remember that weather forecast had kind of droplets of rain and then it had that icon of three streaks which normally means a monsoon and then it, go, it goes back to four wets. And actually, as I change my differential to try and open up the diff to make my life easier on the traction here, as we go through the second last corner, the safety guard gets called out, the full safety guard, and there has been no crash here. There's been no incident. And so this is a safety guard by the FI, literally, for how bad the conditions are. You can actually, if, if you listen carefully enough, as we go towards sector one in the S section, you'll hear how bad the rain is falling. That literally, that's how bad it is. I've never seen the rain quite this bad in an F1 game, but this is literally full on monsoon conditions. I can't see anything ahead of me at this point. And if I just uh, quiet up for a sec, you'll hear how much the rain's coming down right now. The 
So our first experience on this game with monsoon weather and the first time in two years, I think, the safety guard's actually been called out in the F1 game just due to the weather conditions. I think the last time was all the way back on my F1 2016 career mode at Malaysia, I think it was, in like season two of that vanilla career mode where we had monsoon conditions and the safety guard got called out purely for safety reasons. And so now we get on the way eventually two or three laps later with still a one-two for Renault. Everyone's staying put really in the same order and we go again. The rain is still coming down pretty heavy, but now I assume it's probably going to get a little bit lighter as we go on for immediately on the next lap. So that's why the FI feel like it's uh, safe enough now to go again, but it's still so treacherous. Like that Mercedes car, especially the gray is just blending into the gray of the sky and everything. And it wasn't for the name tags. I really couldn't see anything there. And so again, we just trundle around, literally tiptoeing around and just try and survive until hopefully the intermediate period can come soon enough. But one man who is on the move is going to be my teammate, Raikkonen, with all the balls in the world. It's going to be three wide, actually, between him, Bottas, and that is, I think, the Haas of Magnussen. And oh, Kimi's been tapped on the rear end by Bottas. And so he went for a double overtake move on Bottas and Magnussen. Instead, loses two positions there. He's now behind Charles Leclerc in the Sauber there. Three positions back, I think that is uh, is Verstappen still struggling, but let's have a look at a replay then on board with Raikkonen and you can see here, he's made the move at this point, but then locks up and then he gets a tap there, you can hear on the back end as Bottas kind of goes right into the back of him and that pushes him deep and so he goes behind the Sauber, so unfortunate stuff for my teammate, like I said, it's going to be tough for him to recover and even tougher for uh, Max Verstappen here he is, still behind on the Force India cars and also Brent Hartley there, uh, I think in P15 or P16 in no man's land pretty much and so that's one less guy I need to worry about in the championship in terms of this race uh, of getting more points than me. Uh, speaking though of the Red Bull family, you got the Toro Rosso up here, Gasly feeling pretty good in these conditions and confident. He's going for the move on Stoffel Van Dorn. This is just ahead of Hamilton so if these guys actually fight enough, maybe there's a chance we can catch up there but I wouldn't uh, kind of put any money on it but Gasly with a very nice move on the inside of Van Dorn. Van Dorn puts a very good fight up though I gotta say in the stadium section but eventually Gasly will be up the order and I'll be behind Ricardo on the road in P4. P3 is still a Fernando Alonso and it's still a 1-2 for Renault. They're looking very dominant and comfortable in these conditions. But as we move on now to lap number 10, Sainz with the fastest lap, then Hulkenberg as well. The conditions are getting better and it's actually time to come in for the intermediate. It may not look like it, but it is time to come in. My engineers asked me to come in and so we shall agree with him. So we're in from P8 then and we're going to strap on the green wall set and unfortunately I think maybe uh, Raikkonen might have to double stack. I think the Renaults definitely have double stacked. Um, so there's a chance Kimi comes in as well. Although looking behind, I don't think he has. No, nope, doesn't look like Kimi has come in because that's Verstappen in the background who's come in as well. So it looks like Raikkonen's gone on for one more lap on the full wets. It looked wet enough that he might be okay actually, to be honest. And probably better than double stacking with me losing even more positions here. But we come out then and now it's time to try and get the power down and hopefully get a bit more pace in this car. I feel like uh, the track will be a little bit better and faster for me uh, personally on these inters compared to the full wets, which really are just nerve-wracking times. I can't lie. It's very nerve-wracking times on those four wets because at any moment you can just lose the back end and slam it into a wall. But anyways, now we're going to start to try and chase after the cars ahead of us there but you can see on that replay camera it's going to be Hulkenberg who's nowhere near science now and so that double stack for Renault has really not worked. So three races in a row now. Hulkenberg's pretty much been screwed over either by his own strategy or the team strategy and uh, he's pretty much he, he's not. He's trying his hardest not to be in this championship part, isn't he? As we now go around the outside of Ocon still on wet tyres and we're going to come through now uh, on P11 on lap 11 and we're going to gain some more positions as people are in the pits for their pit stops finally onto Inters there goes Raikkonen then so he didn't make that double stack work Bottas out of the Grand Prix then for some reason I think that's a mechanical failure and so we're up into P8 then Van Dorn the car ahead of us and on the minimap you can see that yellow dot is Hulkenberg up the road so Hulkenberg's lost that massively He's now down to P6 from what was P2. So, Renault, that wasn't really a smart decision for the double stack. I think they probably would have had enough pace. Looking at how uh, comfortable that Renault was, I think they would have had enough pace to, to still have Hulkenberg in P2 if he stayed out for one entire lap on the full wet. But meanwhile now, on lap 14, we're going to try and close up on the Belgian man, Swoffel van Dorn, the man who took my McLaren car after we left in Season 3. Round the outside we go, nice and easy on the braking, but van Dorn very slow mid-apex then. So we're going to try and force a move on the outside and uh, Van Dorn just about get, gives us enough room to work uh, with on the outside and we're going to eventually go to the inside for the next right-hander and we're up into P7 then. So now we've got a lot of clean 
there to try and catch up to Hulkamerk if we can. But I don't think that's going to be the case, to be honest. I think we're just going to have to try and now uh, stay put and not bin this car. But as I say those famous last words, we move on to lap 15 then with Science and the purple lap time there. We're going to move the rear tyre quite wrongly on the curbing, lose the back end. And now I do the biggest drift I've ever done in the F1 game there. Very dramatic, full opposite lock. And I just about managed to hold it. And so that's going to be uh, probably right up there. I thought the save I did at Paul Ricard at the French Grand Prix was an impressive save in the last sector. That was an even bigger save to keep that car in a straight line and actually keep that going uh, semi-correctly on the track there. We're going to look at a the replay there and just see. I've got the rear end on the, on, the, on, the, on the curbing and that's what offset the car. And so look at that. A huge, huge drift. But actually looked quite nice and impressive, visually speaking, uh, to get it back on. Uh, just a little bit on the grass on the curbing. But we basically got it back onto the racing line. So all's fine. But we just about managed to survive that period then. I'm going to come in now for our second pit stop of the Grand Prix onto another set of Inters there as it's still going to rain until the last couple of laps then. So there might be a chance to make a third pit stop for dry tyres right at the end of this race, but there was no point trying to risk it on Inters because they would have worn out way too much and everyone's going to come in anyway. So we make the pit stop. We're not going to lose anything really making this pit stop. We're going to fresh Inters so that might make things a bit more comfortable for us. And clearly I was struggling for comfortability because uh, that's not a word, but you know, uh, with, that ma with that major drift may have been quite fun to do and uh, visually speaking quite nice to look at, but that definitely was a sign that my car didn't exactly have the best grip levels it's had ever on the F1 game. So now with eight laps to go, we go again and just try and survive this. But meanwhile, Holkenberg has got other ideas because Hamilton's pit one lap after Holkenberg here. So there might be a chance for a nice undercut on these fresh inters. There goes Holkenberg round the outside to turn one. Hamilton, though, makes a lot of contact with Holkenberg. Effectively pulls him back with his front run tyre there. It's a little bit debatable move from Hamilton. But the two go side by side into the S section. Holkenberg has to yield that position and just stick behind him in the S section. So Holkenberg still stuck in what is, I think, P6 or 7 behind this Mercedes car. Eventually, though, on that same lap on the main straight, then no DRS still for any of these uh, guys. Obviously, it's uh, rain conditions, too wet, but uh, uh, Holkenberg down the inside then and does get that move done, so good for him to be ahead of Hamilton then. So, now he has a possible chance to go chasing after this man, Pierre Gasly, in the Toro Rosso car. He's still, he's still doing a fabulous job behind Ricardo, behind uh, Alonso in second place, and then it's going to be Carlos Sainz that still leads the way and looking just as dominant as he did at the Japanese Grand Prix, so dare I say, I don't want to jinx it for him, but it could be two wins on the trot then for Carlos Sainz. It's a shame he wasn't too consistent in the first half of the season because with two wins on the trot, he could have probably been in the championship hunt if he was more consistent, but alas, he's, uh, he's quite some way off the, the top standings there. We now move on to lap 23. Dearest enabled, it is time to come in for the slick tyres now with five laps remaining there. So we just about drift through their opposite lock once again, uh, not for the uh, first time in this race. And we come into the pit lane then for a set of super soft tyres. I wanted to go to ultras, but I had no fresh set of ultras left. So I'm forced to go on to a brand spanking new set of supers, which is okay, but it's not ideal because the warm up on these tyres will be a lot slower than the ultras. So the guys behind me might have a good chance to really hound me at the end of this race. Uh, with kind of quicker warm-up on them. Uh, obviously, some of these guys may be knocked out in Q2, so they have those fresh sets, okay, or they might have just obviously got the allocation. They might have just asked for more ultras, or they've just risked it on uh, more worn ultra-soft tyres. I'm not going to take that risk. But Van Dorn's certainly going to go well on those ultra-soft tyres for him because he's closing up on us very rapidly through the second-last corner, going a little bit wide there, and you can see the tyre heat-up hasn't been ideal, and he goes for a major dive down my inside there. I was very caught off guard and surprised by how fast he came uh, up to me in the break zone there. And so he's waltzed past and he's up into P7 now, so I have to do some fighting to get back up into P7. He wants to get to the end of this Grand Prix in that position. That's pretty much the highest we can hope for. On the minimap, you can see pretty much uh, there's no one else near us ahead of us. So it really is just Van Dorn as the maximum position. So I'm hoping, slowly but surely, these tyres will kind of kick into gear and warm up and grip up a little bit with three laps to go. I'm going to try and chase after Van Dorn on that back straight. DRS open here, overtake mode, and Rich Mix going. We are closing up back to Van Dorn, but not quite enough to make a move here. We do... Uh, quite audaciously try some sort of dive bomb there and try and spook him maybe off the corner. Doesn't work out though, so eventually we have to stick behind. It's now onto the second last lap of the Grand Prix, lap 27. DRS open once again on the main pit straight, gaining enough. And this time, can we make a pop to the inside? We're going to have a little lunge down the inside, but Van Dorn shuts that door. And I just don't have enough momentum into turn one there. It's a very, you know, inviting corner, but it closes up so fast on the exit there. And so we have to wait patiently onto the back straight once again. But this time round, second time lucky on the second last half of the Grand Prix. DRS wide open. Overtake mode. We boo to the left-hand side. Then back to the racing line 
on the right, slam the door shut, and we're back up into P7 of the USA Grand Prix. But that will be probably the maximum position we can hope for in this Grand Prix, like I said. But Verstappen is still nowhere near any of us, and he's still lower down outside the points, paying positions win, while Magnussen on the last half of the Grand Prix is going to try and attack Van Dorn down the inside. The side by side they go. Magnussen does get past Van Dorn there. So a really nice overtake for the Dane on the last half of the Grand Prix. But it will be in the end then. Carlos Sainz getting his second win in a row of season four ahead of Fernando Alonso and Dan Ricciardo in third place there. Verstappen though outside the points. Raikkonen did get into the top ten just at the end there I believe ahead of Leclerc. So we, we kind of score some points both of us but uh, P7's not too ideal but I'm just happy we made it to the end really what was a very treacherous Grand Prix at the beginning. Okay pick up rubber and bring it home. So another fantastic victory for Renault today. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Here come today's winning drivers, and what a race it was. This is a team that knows success very well in F1, and they're just itching for even more. Congratulations to the Renault team for their excellent win today. And so, like I stated earlier on in that episode, you know, the fact that Verstappen was down the order anyway wasn't too much of a worry for me for the championship sake. Obviously, Hulkenberg outscored us, but even him, he screwed himself over, and the team did, and he's down to P5 rather than P2. And so it means Hulkenberg does actually get up into second place of the championship now. But you can see we've got a very comfortable 15 points then to Hulkenberg, and Verstappen there also in third place. Raikkonen uh, is kind of closing up a tad, maybe on Verstappen slowly with one point there in P4. Uh, Sainz climbs up in terms of points, not positions though to Ricardo in P6 there so you see what I mean by if science had been more consistent earlier on the season with two wins now he could have been right up there with uh, kind of maybe Raikkonen possibly in the point standings but constructors wise we're still ahead of Red Bull but Red Bull do cut down our margin and the advantage we have in the constructors there so going to Mexico we have some work to do to try and maybe get more of a hold and grip on this because right now in that race we did lose control of the championship in terms of everyone else was scoring points and we weren't really scoring too many but all's clear we're still in the lead in both cases so that's, uh, that's fine by now but going to Mexico we might need to think about a grip penalty finally for a very worn set of internal combustion engines. So that's the only caveat to this. We have to watch out for that. But guys, if you did enjoy the episode, be sure to smash the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you aren't around here, do subscribe for weekly forum content. And before we round out the episode, we're going to purchase a few more reliability upgrades, trying to adapt them for the reset from season four to season five. So we spent some more resource points on that. And so we won't be spending anything on actual updates for Mexico. But I have a hunch that a lot of teams will, won't be trying to do that because everyone's going to want to try and adapt their own parts for next season as well so I'm not too worried in that aspect the only worrying part will be those engine penalties maybe for next episode we'll cross that bridge when we get to that next episode so I'll see you guys then hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time goodbye